Hi there from AgingParents.com. I'm Carolyn Rosenblatt, RN and Elder Law Attorney. My book, The Family Guide to Aging Parents, Answers to Your Legal, Financial, and Healthcare Questions, is going to help you with your aging loved ones. Now, if you're a busy person, I'm going to make it really easy for you to find out what's in this book. I'm giving you a quick preview, just a couple of minutes on each chapter. And this is a look at Chapter 3, Aging Parents and Giving Up Driving. Well now, if there was ever a hot button issue, it's getting a dangerous older person to give up those car keys. Imagine yourself in the situation with an aging parent who's been driving for 60 years or so, maybe more, and you've asked them to stop driving. They think you're nuts, right? And that their driving is fine, but you know for sure it's not. Driving is the ultimate symbol of independence and control, and it is a very hard thing to give up. We all like our independence. So what can you do about a really stubborn aging loved one who doesn't want to stop driving even when they should stop? Well, you surely don't want to have a fighter get yelled at. Oof. Sometimes it can be easier than you think because actually, the majority of older people do give up driving when asked nicely, or sometimes they even do it voluntarily. But if you're one of those whose elder refuses to see it or doesn't realize that she's impaired, you've got to have a plan. And this chapter lays out that plan for you. Now the plan has several parts, with the first being to get in the car with the older person and see for yourself. What do you look for? How do you know if somebody really is a dangerous driver? Well, if you're not scared half out of your wits, I offer you a checklist to use for evaluating the senior's driving. And next, you find out if it's appropriate in your situation to get the older person to agree to limit driving, maybe no night driving to start with. My mother-in-law did this when she was about 80 or so. She stopped driving at night. Now, did that limit her freedom? Yes. And she found friends to take her out when she could. The world didn't end, but it did change for her. And she's still driving. Another strategy is to bring up the subject and see if you can get your loved one to set a date to give up the keys. Maybe it's going to be on Dad's 85th birthday, or maybe the anniversary of something or any other change like a grandchild's graduation, some other marker. That might make it easier. It also gives you and the elder in your life time to plan ahead for some form of alternative transportation. You don't want to isolate dad. You don't want to isolate mom and remove their social contacts when they stop driving. That's really a problem, isolation. So sometimes giving up driving can force a move to a different location, maybe assisted living, maybe in with you, who knows, but it, it really is a life-changing thing and you want to take it seriously. You know, one of the things I suggest is that you don't try to trick the elder. Don't, don't try to sneak away the car or disable it without telling them first. That's just not respectful. People do this, I know, but I, I don't like it unless your aging parent doesn't remember anything. If your aging parent has dementia and doesn't remember anything, Talking to him in advance isn't going to do any good anyway, so you might make an exception in that case and just take the car. There is an end point for driving 100% of the time for a person with dementia. Let me repeat that. 100% of the time there is an end point when a person with dementia has to stop driving. Picture yourself being able to handle that, that conversation gracefully about stopping driving for a person with dementia. Well. I give you a lot to work with for that conversation in this chapter. Finally, I give you a path to follow if your aging loved one absolutely refuses to give up the keys and you are certain they're putting themselves and others in danger by driving. This is where you need to act and my five level approach will leave you with the confidence that you know what to do no matter how your aging parent reacts when they're asked to stop driving. There's a lot in this chapter. It has a number of stories in it of elders who should not have been driving and how those cases worked out. Some of them have pretty scary endings, I do have to warn you. Some were the best outcomes you could want, on the other hand, so I'm sure you will get a lot of very good ideas about aging loved ones and giving up the car keys in Chapter 3. Get your copy of The Family Guide to Aging Parents answers to your legal, financial, and health care questions today right here. Click here. Thanks for listening to the preview. I'm the author, Carolyn Rosenblatt, 
RN and elder law attorney at agingparents.com. Oh yes, and sign up for our free monthly letter with lots of tips, legal information, and case stories about how other people are dealing with their aging parents. And you can get that monthly letter by clicking here. Thanks for listening, and bye-bye now.